Right, welcome back my chicklins. Right, let's look at our first example um, for graph interpretation. Okay, so we just, um, in the previous video, we just spoke about the conditions, right, the basic conditions that your examiners want you to know, right, in terms of graph interpretation. Okay, right, so over here we have sketched below h of x is equal to x times x minus 2, right. Okay, so we can see the sketch of h of x, right, which um, basically shows us a parabola, right, and here's the questions, right, determine the value or the values of x for which, right, the first part is um, h of x less than 0, right, so let's go back to the conditions we spoke about, right, so you can see that that one is talking about this one over here, okay, f of x less than 0, we just call the f of x h of x now, okay, we said that that condition is asking us to find where the function is below the x-axis, okay, all right, then they also say, right, determine the value or the values of x, right, for which h of x times um, h prime of x is greater than 0, right, Okay, so which one over here are they running from? Well, they're basically running from this basic statement over here that they wanted you to know. Sorry, this one. Okay, f of x times g of x, right, greater than um, 0. Okay, and we interpreted that um, in the previous video, right? But notice that what they've done now is that they've changed, right, um, the g of x, right, is something a little bit more challenging, okay, they are speaking now about um, h prime of x, right, so, so long as you are able to work with the function that they're talking about, right, they're going to ask you um, that question, okay, nothing stops them, okay, but so let's um, do the first part, okay, Right, so for a, right, we said that we're looking for where the function h is just below the x-axis, right, so we can see where that is happening on the graph, right, before we even um, complicate matters, right, we can see that the function h, right, is below the x-axis right over here, okay. So where we've highlighted the graph in um, pink, right, that's where the function h of x is less than 0, right. So your answer basically is going to be an interval, right, because it's going to be this entire range, right, of x values, okay. Right, but now the problem is you don't know what the x value is here at a and what's the x value there at b. Right, so what other information have they given you in order for you to calculate those x values yourself? Well, they've given you the equation of h of x, right? So to start off this, right, the first thing you would do is you would say, okay, the first thing I need is my x-intercepts, right? So we're going to say 4x-intercepts, right, let h of x equal 0. Okay, so we're going to have, therefore, 0 is equals to x times x minus 2, right, which gives us an x-intercept at 0 and another x-intercept at 2. Okay, right, so now you can say, okay, this coordinate here, obviously now is 0, 0, because that's the origin, right, and that coordinate there is 2, zero okay right but that was not the question right the question was not to find the x values or to find the x intercepts right the question is to state the x values where h of x is less than zero okay so you do that right and you say okay therefore h of x is less than zero when okay x, right, and now you need to be um, careful, right, 
Are we looking at less than zero or less than or equal to zero? Well, we're just looking at less than zero. Right. So if we're just looking at less than zero, we're not interested in the fact that um, the graph is intersecting the x-axis right, um, at um, A and B. Right? So we're not going to actually include these two x um, values. Right? So because we're not going to include them, we're going to state this clearly as just being x values greater than zero, right, but less than and not equal to two. Right. Okay. So now let's go for the second part. Right. Part B. Right. So part B, we have to now introduce another function. Right. So a function h prime of x. Right. So there's a few ways that you can go about this. Right. But you can work um, interchangeably. Right. So for me, the first thing I want to do is to put onto the sketch. Right. The function h prime of x. Right. So the function h prime of x we know from calculus is going to be a linear function, right? Since it's a derivative of a parabola, okay? Right, and calculus also tells us that, okay, here at the turning point, right, that is where the derivative function is going to have a x-intercept, right? So I know that for this x value here at the turning point, right, for that same x value, that's where I'm going to have an x-intercept, right, for my function h prime of x, right. And then the function is obviously also going to have a y-intercept, right, or you could just go from calculus and say, okay, um, before, right, this x-value, right, whatever this x-value is, right, this gradient, right, on the function h is decreasing right which means that my function or my derivative function is going to be below the x-axis right okay and then after that for these values right after this unknown x value over here right the gradient on this function h right is increasing okay so then the function h prime of x has to then be above the x-axis okay so that over there is now h prime okay all right so we now have a sketch of h prime of x on the graph right we now have to be concerned about what is the x value over here at the turning point. It's not really such a difficult thing um, to figure out. We know that the x value there is just the midpoint of these two um, x intercepts, right? So we're going to have 0 plus 2 is 2, right? Divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so that gives you an x value of 1 over here. Okay, if you wanted the corresponding y value, that's also not a train smash, okay? And then take this x value and substitute it back in there, right? So you can see if you substitute it back in there, you're going to have 1 times something, okay? Which means that you cannot ignore this x and focus on this, right? So you're going to have 1 minus 2, which is going to give you a corresponding y value of minus 1. Okay? All right. Okay. So now let us think about the two situations that can occur right in order for us to meet this condition where we have ultimately um, greater than zero okay we said that that is going to happen when either of these two are both of them are above right or both of them are below right let's write it over here Okay, and that's because positive times positive is going to be greater than zero and negative times negative is going to be greater than zero. Okay, so you grab yourself a ruler or a paper or whatever, okay, and you put it on top of a graph like that. Okay, so now you're going to work your way right from left to right, okay, that direction. Okay, 
and you're basically now going to slide your ruler along okay and you're going to concentrate on one of the cases first right so let's focus on this first case right where we want to find these two functions okay both of them being above the x-axis at the same time right and we want to record that interval okay all right so here we go all right so far we're seeing the straight line it's below the x-axis and h is above above okay right so now we get to the origin right you can see right the one is above the other one is below okay it's not what we're looking for we want both of them to be above at the same time okay so if we keep moving right now both of them are below the x-axis they both below the x-axis right there is where the straight line is now changing okay the straight line is now going to go above the x-axis okay so concentrate straight line is above but the parabola is still below Okay, straight line is above, parabola is still below. Okay, we've now reached the second um, x, in, um, x intercept, right? The straight line is above, right? The parabola is exactly on the x intercept, right? So in other words, the parabola is now going to start going above the x um, axis, right? So here we go. There we go, right? You can see both of them are now above the x axis. Right. And because these functions are continuous, right, this is now going to happen forever. Right. But where did it start happening? It started happening right over here okay, at this point where x is equal to 2. Okay. Right. So now you have to think to yourself, right, are you actually interested in this um, value of x is equal to 2? Well, no, because why not? Right? Think about what you are doing over here. You are actually multiplying the y values, okay? So for h of x, right, the y value there at x is equal to 2 is going to be 0, okay? Now 0 times whatever this y value is going to be right whatever that y value is is going to be zero anyway okay so which means that because you are looking for greater than zero and not equal to zero it means that you are not including that x value right so you're going to put an open circle there and you're going to recognize that the interval that you're looking for is the one to the right okay forever right So we've now done that first case, right? So now let's go to the second case where we're looking for um, either, for actually not either, for both of the graphs being below the x-axis at the same time, okay? Right, so grab your ruler again. Right, there it is. Right, so we notice that when we slide it along until we get to the origin, right, all the way up to that point, okay, they are on opposite sides. Right. And then after this point, right, so after this x value, they now start being below the x axis, right, both of them. Okay. And that happened all the way until the straight line okay, started to go above the x axis, right. So, which means that that is the interval that we are concerned about, okay. Because after this, okay, if we keep moving, we saw before. The straight line now leaves the hyperbola behind, okay? It now goes above and the hyperbola is still below, okay? So we don't want that, right? So we want to stop right over here, okay? At that x value of the turning point, okay? So we are drawing a line over here, okay? And we know that this all started when we got to this point. Right, x is equal to zero. Okay, so you can see that basically 
the region that we're looking at is this. Okay, if I shade it in. And you can see that both those graphs are below the x-axis. Okay, so now let's think, right? For this x value of 0, right, where does that x value belong to or who does it belong to? It belongs to um, h of x, right? So if you plug in 0 there, okay, it has a y value of 0, basically. Okay, if you plug, plug in that y value of 0 back here, okay, then it's going to make this whole thing equal to 0, so which means that we don't want to include that x value of 0, okay, open circle, right? What about this x value of 1, okay, we already determined that, that there's an x value of 1 there at the turning point. Well, x value of 1, okay, for h of x, right, is negative 1, okay, so for Basically, if we write it out, write the h of 1, okay, is equal to negative 1, okay, and h prime of 1, okay, so h prime of 1 is there, okay, that is the point 1, 0, okay, so h prime of 1 is 0, okay, so now you can see if you multiply these two, okay, again, you're going to have 0, which is not greater than zero so you don't want to include this point either okay so we're just looking for the x values between here okay right so to write down your solution now okay you're going to say b and you're going to actually state h of x times h prime of x is greater than zero, right? When, okay, we talk about this first interval, okay? So when I'm going to use interval notation, so I'm going to write x, an element, okay, of open bracket, x value of zero up until an x value of one. Okay, that's not my only solution, so I use the symbol union. Okay, so I say union. Okay, and I state my second solution from that x value of 2. And I know that's going to go on to infinity. Okay, right. So that was our first example of um, looking at graph interpretation. Okay, I hope that helps.